As of making this video, Doom is nearly reaching its 30s and this game mechanic is still quite impressive. Sound propagation. The way sound travels through the level and how enemies react to it. Sound propagation adds new layers of complexity to Doom. For example, there are maps that encourage you to be stealthy. Make one tiny sound and everything wakes up guaranteeing an instant death. Often you want to stay quiet, bump into a high tier demon to wake them up and instigate a massive infighting party. If you were to shoot, all demons would focus on you and you'd freaking die. It is important to note that not all sounds will propagate in Doom. For example, sounds emitting from demons do not propagate. If anything, sound propagation isn't even related to how Doom plays sounds at all. It's a function the game calls separately from anything sound related. The function, P noise alert, is only called once when P fire weapon is called. P fire weapon is a generic function that handles the firing of the weapon you're currently holding. Press the fire key and the sound propagation code will run too. A funny oversight is that since it's not related to the sound code and it being a generic weapon firing handler, is that your weapon doesn't even need to make a sound at all to wake up enemies. I mean, we've all woken up enemies before by the sheer force of punching the air. There are plenty of oversights actually. No matter how noisy your chainsaw is, as long as you don't try to slice the air, the demons don't seem to mind the revving and the puffing of the chainsaw. Same with you humping walls. The oomphing doesn't seem to bother the baddies. Neither do other sounds. Even funnier is when a cyber demon's on a rampage, the enemies don't even bother turning around to see what the hell's going on. Oh, nothing, just another day in hell. But somehow, they can distinguish you firing a rocket amidst all the cyber demon ownage. And then they wake up. Doom is a weird game. Anyway, let's take a look at how P noise alert works. P noise alert passes two arguments. The target the enemy should hunt down, and the actor that made the noise. In this case, both will always be the player. But the comment written above the function is pretty interesting. If a monster yells at a player, it will alert other monsters to the player. Monsters yelling do not wake up other monsters. But the way the parameters are set up implies the function could have been used in other ways. For instance, you can add a P noise alert where the enemy plays its wake up sound. As a target, set the emitter's current target that needs to be hunted down. And the emitter is of course the enemy itself. Now when the enemy yells after spotting its target, other enemies in the room will also wake up. Why two pointers that in the end always point to the same player actor object? It's software had some plans, I'm telling you. Anyway, a variable called valid count increments here. This variable is mainly used to ensure certain calculations are only done once. You'll see this in a bit. Now comes the meat of the sound propagation code, a function that calls itself recursively, P recursive sound. It eats up two parameters, the sector the player is in when firing their weapon, and the amount of sound blocking lines crossed. This will be used later. So here we go. The first thing we do is check if we already handled this sector. A sort of unique number is given to the sector that is compared the next time P recursive sound is called. If the number matches the valid count value variable given a P noise alert, then skip sound propagation. This will prevent the function from recursively handling the same sectors over and over again. The sector will also store a value if sound traversed in it or not, later used when sound blocking lines are involved. The sector remembers who the sound made, in this case it will point to the player that fired the shot. This is called the sector sound target. The way this works is when enemies are idle, each time the sprite alternates, they will listen to the sector sound target and hunt them down if there is one. This is the only time when enemies will check for sound targets. When there is more than one player in the level, the sound target gets overwritten to the player who shot last. Interestingly, if you are playing multiplayer by yourself, die and then respawn, the sound target will point to your corpse until you make a new sound. Forgetful demons they are. Now, why look for the sector sound target in the first place? Doing it this way is a lot less expensive than iterating which enemies are in the sector and waking them up one by one whenever you fire a shot. Now with the enemies awake in the current sector, let's see if the sound can travel any further. For each line in the sector, they will do the following. Is this line a solid wall, or could it have a different sector on the other side? If it's the latter, let's continue. The line could be part of a door or lift. Is it open, opening or closed? If it's even one map unit open, sound can travel through, so we continue once again. 
We store the newly found sector in a new variable here, which we'll pass down recursively in a moment. A check here is done to ensure the sector of the line borders is a new one, and not the one we handled before. The line that we checked, is it flagged to block sounds? And is it the first sound blocking line that we found so far? Then call p recursive sound again, but this time using the new sector as a base and setting the sound blocks variable to 1. We do the same things as with the previous sector. Set the sector sound target, check all the lines again, yada yada yada. So this line here is flagged to block sounds. We will color these blue instead of red. The propagation doesn't end here though, so we will check out this sector too. If the next sector happens to have another sound blocking line dev, sound ceases to propagate beyond the line and moves on to the next lines until a new sector is found. If no new sector can be found, the recursive function ends and sound propagation is finished. And yes, this is basically a flood fill algorithm. Nothing too fancy, but it works. This can go on for very long distances, even to sectors so far away that entities here practically hear nothing, but still react to it. Nobody ever said Doom is a realistic game. Now that we know how sound propagation works and how enemies react to it, we can apply some cool tricks. The most obvious one is sound tunnels, which even id software used. You may have noticed in some Doom maps that walls have gaps or holes in them. Id Software made these to propagate sound into a closet filled with enemies that normally don't wake up because they cannot see you. The sound propagates into these monster closets. Enemies wake up, and then they either open up the wall, or walk into teleporters to teleport into the map. If you don't want to use these ugly tunnels, you can also utilize dummy sectors. Dummy sectors can be seen as portals between two or more sectors. A dummy sector is used to trick the engine into thinking the sector is part of another sector, but is, in this case, disconnected. Then there's the ambush flag for enemies, or often incorrectly called death monsters. Enemies set to ambush will be granted 360 degree vision when the target is set through sound. They will remain asleep until the player presents itself in a 360 degree vision. Another experiment you can do is see the sector's sound target in action. For example, you can make an out-of-bounds enemy teleport in by pushing it into the teleporter through a barrel explosion. If the enemy teleports into the room where you fired a shot, it will always teleport in angry at you. If no shot was fired, it will teleport in asleep. Granted, if you are not in the enemy's line of sight, of course. Lost souls are weird too. Each time they slam into a wall, they check the sector's sound target to immediately wake up again and hunt down the player that fired a shot. If they slam into a wall in a sector that has no sound target set because, for example, the door was closed when you made a sound in the area next to it, it will fall asleep. As mentioned in the intro, sound propagation is a relatively simple implementation, but it adds several layers of complexity where both players and appers can toy with it. Thank you for watching as usual, big thanks to the patrons and YouTube members for the monthly support, and shoutouts to 19 Day, Agonizing Oral Pain, Agonizing Rectal Pain, Andrew Dunai, Andrew Riss, Andrew Yukumchuk, Andri Diklin, aka Machhauser, Anthony Sicko, Art Cox, Peaks Make Me Kum, Bitcore, Bofu, Brother Bob, Bobski, Bonderstorm, Cyprian Rusum, Arian Sista, Erin Wolf, Francis T218, Frigi Duck, Green Knight 9000, Jeffrey Catalan, Joseph Shans, Katsune Teku, Kiri Gorobets, Master Biggie, Matthias Sippert, Max Payne 67, Mr. Charon, Nighthawk 71, Old Man Han, Pete Peterse, Paro Shi, Quake Gamer 632, Raven King, Ryan Quinn, Riley, Robert Wakeley, C Nanana, Skull Bladder, Space Duck, Spectre, Steak Jacobs, Steven Halustic, Tech Okami, The Boss CL, Thomas, Tim Goldberg, Timothy Collar, Turbine 2K5, Victoria, Watch Space Dandy, White Fuzzy Santusi, and Who's Ace. Wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a fantastic 2023.